Welcome back to a brand new edition of the best solo carries, this time for patch 12.19. As always, we will be covering three champions for every single role that our analysts rate the highest for the current state of the solo queue meta. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. Mordekaiser has been on the verge of moving into our top three for weeks now, and he finally breaks in for 12.19. With Aatrox falling in power due to the Eclipse nerfs and Mord having very favorable matchups in meta, he jumps up in priority. Maokai seeing more play is amazing, as Mordekaiser loves playing into these tank matchups. The one matchup we'd recommend staying away from and using your ban on is Fiora. Fiora's W combined with her mobility makes it extremely difficult for Mord to land his E, so it's like he only has three abilities in the matchup. Other than Fiora though, Mord has a positive win rate against the 10 most played top laners, which is pretty crazy. You can go in two different directions with your build on Mordekaiser. Standard carry build is a Riftmaker Rush into Rylai second and Demonic Embrace third. The build actually winning the most though and offering more durability is Rylai's Rush into Sunfire second and Demonic Embrace third. Rylai's Rush is extremely underrated on Mordekaiser as it provides him with the durability he wants along with amazing sticking power, so it's more difficult for the enemy to kite him out. Runes are Conqueror with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand. Grab Second Wind and Revitalize for secondaries. Maokai is currently an incredible flex pick, able to be played in three different roles, but top lane is where he's thriving the most. The passive nerfs last patch were not enough to dethrone Maokai from his high standing, as he's one of the most reliable top lane champs and best pure tank for 12.19. The recent Q buffs have given Maokai way more power in lane as it's a relatively short cooldown spell that can be used to easily harass other melee champs. With flash available, Maokai is some of the best gank assist for any top laner, so if you notice your jungler starting bot side and pathing towards top, keep the wave in a spot where he can gank after it's clear. Level 6 is even more insane now that Maokai has a movement speed boost from his R and it makes his engage way more consistent without needing to flash. With Mordekaiser being in a strong spot and also played at a pretty high rate, he's a good band to use when playing Mao. The build for Maokai is a Sunfire Rush into Winter's Approach 2nd and a Situational Tank Item 3rd. Run Grasp as the keystone in the majority of your matchups, however if you're against a ranged top who you'll never be able to proc Grasp against, then running Phase Rush is a great alternative. Shen has been such a quiet yet incredibly strong performer for many patches now and retains his spot in the top 3. There's no other top laner in meta who has the ability to win lane and transition that lead as well as Shen. Other than Mordekaiser, Shen thrives in most meta matchups, so as long as you ban Mord, you can blind pick Shen and always be useful. The luxury of being able to run Ignite but also impact that map due to Shen's global ultimate gives you so many ways to influence games. You can smash the 1v1 and win through top, or if you're in a more difficult lane, you can look for ult plays down bot to get your team ahead while the enemy top sits on an island. Core build for Shen is a Frostfire Rush into Titanic Hydra second and a Situational Tank Item third. Grasp is Shen's best keystone with Shield Bash, Second Wind, and Revitalize. Optimal secondaries are Cheap Shot and Ultimate Hunter. It's time for a shakeup of the jungle top three as Belveth will be making her first appearance in a while. The major factor in Belveth moving up in priority is due to indirect nerfs to other junglers. Master Yi, Hecarim, Kane, and Udyr were all tagged with nerfs in the past two patches, which has opened up a spot for Belveth. The only matchup Belveth has had a negative win rate against in recent patches has been Master Yi, so now that he's nerfed, it makes her even stronger. Belveth's raw solo carry power is hard to match right now as her incredible mobility and skirmishing strength is so oppressive. Ban wise for Belveth, Kindred is one of the better options as the range discrepancy and ability for Kindred to kite around Belveth Q and W makes it more difficult to play. The build is a Kraken Slayer Rush into Blade of the Ruin King 2nd and Death's Dance or Wit's End 3rd. Best Rune page is Conqueror with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. For secondaries, pick up Free Boots and Cosmic Insight. Udyr's 12.19 tank buffs are only targeted towards top lanes, so Bruiser in the jungle will be the way to go. A Q Max with Trinity Force Rush is definitely the higher impact setup over tank from a solo carry standpoint. As a result of recent Q buffs, Udyr can absolutely shred his opponents, especially when you have Triforce and can utilize the Spell Blade procs. If you're going the Bruiser route after completing Trinity, you'll transition into Blade of the Ruined King 2nd and Deadman's Plate 3rd. 
Tank is still viable though, and can be run if your team is really lacking a front line. If you do opt for the R Max tank setup, then it's the same as always with the Sunfire Rush into Demonic Embrace second and Dead Man's third. With Belveth's play rate rising and her being a more difficult matchup for Udyr, she is the ban we would recommend. Conqueror is the best keystone with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand. Celerity and Water Walking are great for secondaries. The most criminally underrated champion in the entire game right now is Fiddlesticks. 12.19 is the patch for Fiddle to take over, as champs that were around the same power level in recent patches like Master Yi, Hecarim, and Kane have all been nerfed. When it comes down to that devastating teamfight jungler, nobody comes close to matching Fiddle right now. Solo queue is all about finding picks on players who are caught out of position, and there are few who can capitalize on positional errors as well as Fiddle. Fid is one of the only junglers who can reliably make ganks work when the enemy is sitting close to tower due to his ultimate. Simply by picking Fiddle, the enemy has to play so much more respectful at around level level 6 because you can gank from so many different angles. Udyr being strong in meta and one of the better early game skirmishing junglers is a good ban for Fiddlesticks. The build is a Rocket Belt Rush and Azania's second and Shadow Flame or Void Staff third. First Strike is the best keystone with perfect timing, Futures Market, and Cosmic Insight. Roll with Cheap Shot and Ultimate Hunter for secondaries. Ever since his 12.17 buffs, the play rate of Set mid has been on the rise, and it's for good reason. Set simply destroys so many of the meta mid lane champs and is relatively easy to execute as well. Melee mids have an extremely difficult time going toe to toe with Set. With E available, the enemy cannot walk up to contest minions. Set will just pull them in with E, point and click shred the enemy with Q, and counter with W shield if they try to trade back. Ranged mids are a little more difficult to play into, but you can just run a heavy sustain setup to alleviate that. Vex is one of the better mid bands right now due to her high play rate and relative power level. Conqueror is the most popular keystone for set, but fleet footwork can be taken in ranged poke lanes. With fleet, Dorn shield, and second wind, you can easily bypass any bad early game matchups. The Koreans really like a tanky build for their set mid, running Frostfire Gauntlet as the mythic, but Stride Breaker is an option as well. Titanic Hydra and Sterix are the best second and third items for the majority of games. With Eclipse nerfed this patch and Zed falling in power as a result, Vex will rise in priority even further. Vex makes the top 3 for very similar reasons to Set, as she has so many favorable matchups in the current mid lane meta. Despite Silas being nerfed and falling in strength, he is still the most played mid laner, which is exactly what Vex wants. Not only are matchups amazing, but Vex is the perfect kit for a solo carry mid. You can't ask for much more than a reset on ultimate, strong burst power, and the ability to hard counter dive champs. Although the majority of Vex's matchups are great, a few ranged mages can give her some issues, so Victor is our recommended ban. Ludens or Everfrost are viable rush items. Definitely prioritize Ludens for most games, but if the enemy comp has very heavy dive, going Everfrost for some added peel power is worthwhile. For runes, pick up Electrocute with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter. Mana Flow and Scorch are the optimal secondaries. Victor is going to round out the top three for mid, as he's been in such a good spot for many patches now. Eclipse nerfs will be a nice indirect boost to Victor and all mages in general for 12.19. Now that potions have been nerfed and Scorch was buffed, Victor actually has some pretty sleeper early pressure in many melee matchups. Once you can start one hitting waves with E is when Victor can really begin impacting the game. In easier, less volatile matchups, look to run Ghost instead of Teleport. Being a mage, Vic doesn't have the greatest roam power, so by running Ghost it allows you to rotate faster and be more active around the map. Ghost also makes playing teamfights later on so much more smooth with Victor. Ludens is the best mythic for most games, but Leandris works great into beefier comps. Look to run Ludens with Shadow Flame into squishy comps, while Leandris into Lich Bane works best into more bruisers or tanks. You have options in regards to the Keystone rune, as Airy will work best into melee mids, where you can maximize the added poke power. First Strike, on the other hand, scales much better and should be run in lanes where you don't have early kill pressure. Kai'Sa has seen a surge in power over the most recent patches and moves into the top 3 for ADC in 12.19. It was the buffs from a few patches back, coupled with multiple ADCs being nerfed, that has pushed Kai'Sa back into a powerful spot. For many patches, we had Sivir and Zeri dominating the meta, but them dropping down has made way for someone like Kai'Sa to rise back up. It's also very beneficial for Kai'Sa that supports like Thresh, Maokai, and Leona are being played more now. We just saw Yumi and Lulu nerfed super hard, which in turn has shifted more priority onto support that synergize much better with Kai'Sa. The build is a Kraken Slayer Rush into the Collector 2nd and Phantom Dancer 3rd. Halo Blades and Lethal Tempo are both viable keystone runes. Lanes where you think you have early kill pressure, run Halo Blades for more burst power. In more difficult lanes or when you've got less kill pressure, grab Lethal Tempo for more scaling power. 
There's really no debate in regards to the best ADC right now, as Misfortune is a cut above everyone else. The transition from Lethality over to Crit has been extremely positive for MF, and she has flourished as a result. Laning phase is solid. MF scales really well into the mid game and can have more consistent teamfight impact than most ADCs. MF can also fare quite well into Kai'Sa, which is great considering Kai'Sa is the most played ADC right now. There isn't really a specific ADC you'd want to ban when playing MF, so using your ban on someone like Yasuo who can nullify your ult is a good idea. Instead of the Collector, we're seeing many pros prioritize a Bloodthirster as MF's second item. More survivability coming out of BT, and it will also scale much better. Nothing beats Press the Attack, followed by Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras. Run Free Boots and Biscuits for secondaries. Samira is another ADC who's been loving the way bot lane meta has been shifting over the past couple patches. Less Lulu, Yumi, Spam, and more of Thresh, Nautilus, and Mumu is exactly what you want to see if you're a Samira main. Now that many ADCs are running Ghost instead of Heal or Exhaust, it can actually benefit Samira as well. If the enemy takes Ghost, you have so much more 2v2 power in lane and can demolish them during all-in plays if you have Exhaust. The changes a few patches ago were also huge for Samira, as potion healing and overall sustain being nerfed bodes well for a champ who wants to be forcing the issue. Ban-wise for Samira, MF is a good option right now, with her being super broken and played a ton. The build is a Shield Bow Rush into the Collector 2nd and Infinity Edge 3rd. Optimal Rune Page consists of Conqueror with Triumph, Bloodline, and Last Stand, followed by Eyeball Collection and Treasure Hunter for secondaries. A pretty small patch in general, and only one change to support, so you can expect Amumu to continue dominating the meta. Amumu is the perfect solo carry from the support role, as his engage and all-in power is on another level. With most supports, after they use their long-range engage tool, they have nothing to follow up with after. Amumu having two Q charges gives him this incredible pick range and sticking power no other support has. With Misfortune, Kai'Sa, and Samira being on top of the meta for ADC, it's amazing for Amumu as all three of them have great follow-up for his engage. Definitely look to ban out Janna right now as her peel power is very obnoxious to deal with. The best build for Amumu is an even shroud rush into Zanya second and Thornmail third. Aftershock is the best keystone in more volatile lanes where you'll be trading aggressively, while Glacial is best in lanes where the enemy duo lacks considerable kill threat. Maokai's support is really being slept on right now after his mini rework. Other than Amumu, Maokai is the best melee engaged support you can play for solo queue. Like Amumu, Maokai's gank assist is incredibly strong and the most reliable for any support, which allows you to easily set up early kills to snowball off of. Now that you get movement speed from ultimate, the pick power of Maokai has shot up drastically. What makes Mao so great as well is that he takes very little skill to play. Ideally, this is what you want to be spamming in solo queue, a champion who's strong in meta but is also very simple to execute. Only support who can give you issues right now is Janna, so we would highly recommend you ban her out. Prioritize building Maokai as a tank with Q max instead of AP, going for a Dead Man's Plate Rush into Even Shroud 2nd and Wardstone 3rd. Run Aftershock as the keystone with Font of Life, Bone Plating and Unflinching, Biscuits and Cosmic Insight are the way to go for secondaries. Not gonna lie, definitely a little surprised that Janna has not been nerfed for 12.19. Nevertheless, it means you have another patch to abuse the most broken enchanter in the game. Nobody does it better than Janna when when it comes down to fending off dive champions, so with Hecarim and Maokai coming back into meta, she fits in super well. The only matchups Janna doesn't like as much are champs who can beat her from range, so MF and Ash are good ban options. It's also super nice that heal has fallen in priority on ADCs, as it allows Janna to run the summoner spell and benefit greatly due to the increased heal and shield power she gets from items. The build is a Moonstone Rush into Redemption or Putrefire second and Ardent Sensor third. For runes, grab Glacial Augment with Free Boots, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Font of Life and Revitalize is the best secondary page. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Now that you're completely up to date with the best solo carries for 12.19, thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.